Two months ago, I had $220,000 of student loans discharged under the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program. Today, we'll be talking about the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program generally, my story, and giving you some tips if you're going through the process yourself. Hi, I'm Joseph Cochran. And I'm Scarlett Cochran, and we are lawyers and wealth experts. And this is One Big Happy Life, where we help you find balance, build wealth, and live happy. Everything that you need to create the life that you want. So today, we are going to be talking about student loans and public service loan forgiveness. Now, when it comes to student loans, so many people feel a lot of negative emotions about the, that particular debt. And so before we dive into PSLF, I wanted to let you know about a brand new money masterclass that I just did called How to Stop Stressing About Your Debt. You can access the replay over at onebighappylife.com forward slash stop debt stress. And it is a great place to start when it comes to managing your student loans well. You can find a link for that free money masterclass in the card above or in the description box below. So pause the video and go sign up. Okay, now that you're back, We wanted to talk a little bit about the background. What is public service loan forgiveness? Well, it is a repayment option if you have qualifying federal student loans. A lot of people think that public service loan forgiveness is actually this separate program that's just outside of your student loans. But actually, when you sign up for your student loans, there is something called a master promissory note that creates the debt. And inside of that note, it talks about the different ways that you can repay your student loans and the different types of payment plans that are available to you. And one of the options for repaying federal student loans, certain types of federal student loans, is public service loan forgiveness, where you work for a qualifying employer and you make 120 on-time payments while in a qualifying repayment plan. So there are a number of boxes that you have to check in order to qualify, but it is a repayment option that is available to you and made available to you as part of that promissory note that created the debt in the first place. Okay, so why did public service loan forgiveness work for us? Why did we choose that? Well, back when I was going to law school, the program came out and and I was excited about it because that gave me more options with how I wanted to take my career. And then after graduating law school, I took a public service job and I knew that I was gonna qualify. So this just worked out perfectly. Now, we've never talked about this, but I'm curious, how did you find out about public service loan forgiveness? So I just was really reading the news a lot and I'm sure whatever news stories were being fed to me had to do with student loans and and going to school, all that kind of stuff. and so. It was a big announcement, and then I started looking into it more and more as the program rolled out. So Joseph and I are both lawyers, and we both initially pursued public service loan forgiveness. I decided to leave my public interest job two years ago and to run One Big Happy Life full time. So I'm no longer in the public service loan forgiveness program, but I wanted I was initially and did do what by about five years of public service loan forgiveness. And I will say how I found out about public service loan forgiveness is from reading my master promissory note. That's how I found out. So in law school, when I, you know, I was looking at my master promissory note, because that's when I really took out a lot of loans in law school. I said I saw this public service loan forgiveness thing and I'm like, oh, that's cool. Because in my mind, I was already thinking about doing public service work outside once I graduated from law school. And I was going to be taking advantage of my law school's um, loan repayment assistance program, which really was aimed at people who were going to into public interest and making less money. So then I realized I could combine those two programs, my law school's program plus the program that was going to be offered by my loan originator, which is the federal government, because I had federal student loans, and I could combine those together to create a loan repayment option for my student loans where I could still thrive financially. Now, public service loan forgiveness is in the news, I mean, practically daily, right? And it's frequently not getting the best press but it's because a lot of people are getting it just completely wrong. And they're thinking, hey, 
this doesn't work because that's the headlines you're seeing. Oh, all these people are applying and they're not getting approved, but that's just not accurate. And let's also mention that there are people in the finance media that are overtly saying that the program doesn't work, that it's a scam, that no one gets it, and that you shouldn't ever look to it or rely on it. But again, that is not true. So you wanted to talk about some of the common myths that you'll see out there. So one thing that we see is that uh, well, doing public service loan forgiveness will limit your job prospects and you'll be stuck at one job and one employer. But that's not true. Both Joseph and I have worked for multiple employers over the course of our public service loan forgiveness journey. Yeah. So you have lots of options. And, you're, and I mean, I never felt constricted because, I mean, there are so many nonprofits, there are so many different levels of government that qualify. So I think like yeah. really I mean, gamut. hospitals, colleges, like Joseph said, plenty of nonprofits. Um, also, which brings me to the next point, which is that you're stuck in a low paying job, which is also not true. There are lots of public interest jobs, jobs that qualify under public service loan forgiveness that pay six figures and even multiple six figures. So you don't have to take a low paying job just because you're doing public service loan forgiveness. Absolutely. Another thing is, that people are saying that it makes more sense to not pursue public service loan forgiveness and just get go out and look for a higher paying job and then pay off the loans yourself. And that is not accurate either. It could be the case that a private sector job might pay more, but that's not necessarily the case. It's, it's not that you're stuck in those low paying jobs. You just you know, you pick the job that, that works for you with the salary that works for you. And if it qualifies for public service loan forgiveness, well, then that's this fantastic bonus that is worth uh, a lot more potentially than just a few thousand more or whatever. You really have to crunch those numbers. Exactly. And it's there are plenty of industries where public and private service, private salaries are actually in alignment. So it's not either or. Plus, it's not just about the money, right? Because oftentimes, especially in the private sector, when you're making more money, you're often working more hours too. And I know that was a big issue for me because sure, I could go out and work at a law firm and make six figures right outside of law school, but I hated the hours. And I also didn't particularly enjoy the work. Now, could I have learned to enjoy the work, especially when stumbling upon the practice area that I ended up doing, which is banking and finance? I didn't do that. So I did other types of legal work. So I thought that I wouldn't like it. So I could see myself maybe working at a law firm right now, but only if they gave me the flexibility that I wanted. Like, I don't want to work more than 40 hours. I want to have time to spend with my family and time to spend with the, on the things that matter to me. And I want to be able to take weekends off and take vacation and my friends who went to law firms, they didn't have the kind of lifestyle balance and flexibility that I had. So it's more than just which job is going to help you pay off your student loans faster. It's like looking at your life holistically, which job is going to be the best for you. Another common misconception is that public service loan forgiveness could just be taken away at any time. And that is just not how government programs work. Now, public service loan forgiveness has been modified several times, but it's frequently to expand it and not really contract it. Once you're already in the program, it's in your master promissory note. It's a contractual obligation. It's not something that is just taken away. It's, but that's just not how it works. And so if you are in the program now, it is there for you. And it's also important to recognize that at no point has anyone ever in all time ever suggested or even remotely mentioned taking away public service loan forgiveness from people who are already eligible? Anytime there are discussions about limiting public service loan forgiveness, it's always going forward for new borrowers. And again, like Joseph mentioned, the reason for this is because public service loan forgiveness is something that is baked into the master promissory note. So for people like me who actually read their promissory note and relied on the availability of this program, they're not for that reason. They're not going to be able to just go back and say, well, we've decided we don't care that we 
listed this in a contract that you signed and we're not going to, we're just not going to, you know, follow through on our promises. That doesn't happen unless you have just a completely corrupt government. And if that is the case, then we've got bigger things to worry about than just public service loan forgiveness, because that's a small fry uh, when it comes to all of the promises and contracts and um, the things that the way that the government runs itself and the expectations that we all have of what the government does. Like we've got bigger problems than public sure. service loan forgiveness. Oh yeah. And the last thing is that a common misconception, it's that most people who apply for public service loan forgiveness get denied. And this is frequently reported in the media and it has a very simple explanation. So you have to qualify for the program, make the certain number of qualifying payments with while you're employed by a particular employer, and then you can apply for it and you'll get approved. The problem is people who don't qualify are asking for it. Yeah, it's like people, like imagine if all the 20 year olds in the country all applied for social security. The approval rate for social security would plummet. Why? Because 20 year olds, just your average 20 year old is not eligible for social security. And so if we all know that, so 20 year olds aren't like, oh, well, let me just see what happens. Maybe I'll get social security. But that is what happens with public service loan forgiveness because people don't understand the way the program works. And they're like, well, let me just shoot my shot. Is that like an inappropriate <laughs> term? Like shoot my shot? Can maybe, it be? Maybe. <laughs> well, let's, we're talking about basketball. Let's just, let me just shoot my shot. Maybe my student loans will be discharged. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? They'll just tell me no. So you have a whole bunch of people who are just trying it out to see what happens. A whole bunch of people who thought that they qualified, but they weren't in a qualified employer. They didn't make enough payments. They didn't submit the documentation that they needed to submit in order to qualify for the program. When you think about it, public service loan forgiveness, people were only eligible in 2020. That the first crop of people that could have been eligible for PSLF was last year. So what we expect to see is that as more and more people understand the way the program actually works and more and more people are eligible or even eligible for public service loan forgiveness, you're going to see those rates rise. Yeah. So as this relates to me, my my story began back in 2010 whenever I graduated from law school and, you know, had my job lined up and I was like, okay, so I was in deferment throughout law school. So I wasn't making any payments on my student loan, but I knew I wanted to get started. I knew I was going to qualify for this program. And I took a look at my loans and realized some of them weren't eligible, but you can, I could bundle them in in a consolidation loan. And then that direct consolidation loan would then be completely eligible. And I would start making my payments then. So I am. Oh, just big point to learn there is that not all federal loans are eligible for public service loan forgiveness. I was in the same position as Joseph. So immediately after I graduated from law school, I did a direct consolidation loan, which made all of my federal loans, not private loans, federal, I don't have any private loans, but federal loans eligible for public service loan forgiveness. Yeah. And so I had some from undergrad that were pre the PSLF program. And so it didn't exist. So I needed to roll those in. And I did. And then I, I started on an income based repayment program. And then I knew my payments were going to qualify starting sometime in that in that fall of 2010. And basically, fast forward to June 2021, I knew I crossed the threshold, I submitted my employer certification, and my application for forgiveness. And then by the end of July, I had a zero dollar balance. All my student loans were discharged and I had the final paperwork that I have no more payments, no more student loans. This has been a plan that's been over 10 years, 11 years more really in the making. And so reaching the end of that plan and seeing Joseph's student loans get discharged it was exciting and it did feel great. But the one thing that we do want to make sure that everyone knows is that life truly does not feel different afterwards, right? I think a lot of people have this idea that once your debt is gone, once you reach a certain financial goal, 
that, oh my gosh, it's going to be unicorns and sunshine just like dripping from the skies all the time and your life is going to be amazing. And really, that's a tendency of ours to believe that life is going to be better in the future when. But in reality, it was like, oh, exciting for a moment and oh, that was fun. And then life just continues on, right? So be careful if you're feeling like you like right now your student loans are a burden, like things are going to be better when they're gone because in and or if you're thinking that, wow, we must be so happy now. And the reality is that life just continues on, which is why I created that Money Masterclass about how to stop stressing about debt for good. So make sure that you click the link down below so that you can watch that class because it will change your approach to your finances and your debt for the rest of your life. So here are some tips to help you if you're thinking about public service loan forgiveness or you're like currently pursuing it. So number one, I would say, is actually having a plan in place. Are you trying to get it or are you not trying to get it? And key to that, is making sure that you understand the program itself. What is going to qualify, what is not going to qualify, because you need, I mean, you need to know that because it's tripped up quite a few people making payments or having loans that didn't actually mm -hmm. qualify. And it's not too complicated, but there are a lot of resources out there to help you figure out how to, what, what's gonna work and what doesn't. Yeah, I mean, we, this was my whole job. I was a banking and finance attorney public service loan forgiveness, understanding student loans was part of my area of expertise. And even I made mistakes along the way. So it's so important that you fully understand the program and how it works. Second, certify your employment every single year. There is a form that's very simple. You fill out some basic information, have somebody in your HR department, sign off, says, yes, you, you work here. And then you can send that into your loan servicer and they say, yeah, these payments did qualify because you worked, you know, the past year, made 12 payments. They all check, check off. And so then it'll count towards your public service loan forgiveness. And that makes it easier the more often you do that. Third, you want to keep your records and document every single thing, right? Because at the end of the day, it's going to be your responsibility to prove that you actually made 120 on time qualifying payments while working for a qualifying employer. So even if you're submitting your verification, your employer verification every year, you keep all of those records. You're making your payments every single month. You keep all of your records because we definitely ran into issues where they missed payments, payments weren't counted, and they were looking to us to say, oh, well, you said you made the payments. Show us that you made the payments. So never believe that it's your loan servicer's responsibility to keep accurate records. It's your responsibility. And this is especially true if your servicer changes. You want to make sure you have all your final statements and everything from the first servicer before it transitions and you don't have access to it anymore. That happened to me and I had to dig around to find some paper copies of some old stuff to, to support some, some payments that were miscounted. And our last and best tip for you is to enjoy your life. Your student loans don't have to define what you can do in your life. And public service loan forgiveness, a lot of people look at it to say and say to themselves, oh, well, I can't do anything for 10 years. It's such a burden. I have so much anxiety. Those are all a choice. We've fully enjoyed our lives all these past 11 years. We've gone on vacations. We've bought houses. We've changed jobs. We've gone even i've even gone in and out of public service employment yeah, that's over, a good point. yeah where i worked for a law firm and then i went back into public interest you, and you can, can do that yeah you can enjoy your life having your student loans taking an extended repayment option on your student loans doesn't mean that you don't get to enjoy the journey you do it's all about how you choose to think about your debt and your finances so be sure to head on over to onebighappylife.com forward slash end debt stress to take our class all about how to stop stressing about debt for good. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.